Sudoku puzzles can look intimidating, but you don't have to be good at maths to do a Sudoku. By focusing on step-by-step -step elimination, you can finish a Sudoku in minutes. Here's a puzzle. Let's work through it together, and before you know it, it'll be solved. There is no specific place to start a Sudoku. It's really up to you. The most crucial thing to remember with a Sudoku is the golden rule. Each row, column, and smaller 3x3 box contains all the numbers from 1 to 9 and only once. And of course, this means that no number appears twice in any row, column, or 3x3 box. All of our problem solving springs from this simple rule. OK, let's get started. We know that each 3x3 box must contain all of the numbers, and the top middle 3x3 is missing a 1. There is a 1 in the second row down and a 1 in the third row. And because these rows cannot contain another 1, you can see that the 1 has to be in the top row. We already have a 2 in the middle square of that area, and there is a 1 in the sixth column, so the new 1 can't be in that column. So the 1 to be added must be in the fourth column from the left. There, we've added our first number already. Let's do another, using this number 2. No other 2 can be added to that column, and there is a 2 in the fourth column, so the 2 to be added to the bottom middle 3x3 three three box can't be in the left or the middle column, it must be in the right column. We already have a 5 in there, and there's a 2 in the row 1 up from the bottom, so the new 2 must be in the bottom right corner. Using the same logic, you can see where to place the 3 in the top middle 3x3 three three box. These 3s show that it can't be in the top two rows, and the 3 here that it can't be in the middle column, so it must be in the bottom right corner of that box. When doing a Sudoku, there is no proper order for continuing. You can try to do all of a particular number, or perhaps scan groups of 3x3 three three boxes to spot quick wins. Let's see this for adding a 4 to the bottom right 3x3 three three box. These two 4s show that it can't be in the left or right column, and this 4 that it can't be in the top row, so it must be in the very middle square of that box. Let's stay with the missing 4s to add a 4 to the bottom middle 3x3 three three box. These 4s mean that it can't be in the top or middle row, so it must be in the bottom left corner. You can begin to see the problem solving pattern. We are looking at existing numbers to see how their rows or columns cross within a 3x3 three three box. Looking at 5s and this middle area, you see that these 5s show that the new 5 must be in the top left corner. And here again, these 2 show that the 5 in the bottom right 3x3 three three box must be in the bottom left square. Already, the numbers we've added reduce the possibilities when adding more making it easier to continue. OK, watch. Here's another way to eliminate squares. Look at this 8 in the bottom left 3x3 three three box. Remembering our golden rule that every 3x3 three three box can only contain each number once, we know that the two empty squares in the bottom row of that box cannot be an 8. So, by elimination, the 8 in the bottom row must be in the far right corner. Staying with this row, now we only have two numbers to fill, and looking at what's already there, these must be a 1 and a 9. Looking up the third column, there is already a 1, so the 1 to be added can't be in the third square from the left. It must be in the very bottom left corner. By elimination, the 9 must be in the remaining square. Row completed. Columns and rows that are almost complete become great places for your attention. Looking at the fourth column, we see that it is missing a 3, and the top and bottom 3x3 three three boxes already have one, so the new 3 goes in the only remaining empty space. We can continue a little faster. These two 8s rule out all but one square in the bottom middle 3x3 three three box, so that must be where the 8 is. Staying with that 3x3, three three, you'll see from these 9s that the missing one must go in the only available top row square. And the 1s in the left and right columns mean the number 1 goes in the middle. Here are 5s that help us with the bottom left 3x3, three three, putting the 5 in the middle too. And this row must contain a 3, 
but it can't go in the middle 3x3 three three box, so goes here. Often areas of the puzzle begin to fill quickly in this way. Here's a slightly different type of elimination. Look at this empty square. We know from our golden rule that the three numbers in the top row must be 1, 3 and 7. But we don't know in what order. But look up this column and you'll see that it already contains a 1 and a 3. So the empty square here must be the 7. I hope you're getting the idea. Here's some more fives in column 7 and 9 which places the 5 in the top middle. 5s in column 4 and 6 and row 2 means 5 in the middle of the third row and 5s in row 2 and 3 and columns 2 and 3 puts 5 in the top left. And that is all the 5s done. So what's next? Sometimes you just can't see it and that's where the puzzle begins. The middle column is only missing a 7 and a 4. If you look at the gaps and see the numbers in each row, a 7 and a 4 are already there. So the only solution is to add them so, 4 and 7. The fourth column is only missing a 6 and a 7. And because a 7 is already in the top 3 by 3, the 6 must go here and the 7 here. Because we've added this 4, these two rows can't contain another and with a 4 in this column, it only leaves space for a 4 here. Now there is some tidying up to do. The only remaining number in this row is a 6, and with a 4 in this row, the only place left for a 4 is here, which means an 8 completes this 3x3, three three, and with all of these 4s in place, a 4 has to go here. To complete the top row, we'll need a 9, but two of the gaps have a 9 already in their columns. So the top row 9 must go here, in the corner. Let's continue with 9s. The first column needs 1, but it can't go in two of the gaps, so it must be here. This area only needs a 7 and a 9, which means the 9 can't go here now, so 7 and 9 here. You can see, once you get going, often the stages of elimination seem to flow together as you begin to spot the way forward, and we are close to the finish. Row 2 needs a 9 and a 2. The 9 can't go here, so 2 here, which means the 9 here. The top row still needs a 7 and an 8. We can see from here that the top left 3x3 three three needs a 7, and it has to be in the right column, so the 8 must go over here. To finish this 3x3 three three needs an 8 and a 2. 8 can't go here, so 2 and 8. Finish column 1 with a 6, and finish the area with a 2. The third column, it needs an 8 and a 6. This row already has an 8, which means a 6 here and an 8 below. And here is an interesting combined elimination. The third row only needs a 7 and a 6 to be completed, and the last column needs a 6, but there are four spaces in that column. However, three of those rows already contain a 6, so the 6 in the third row must go here in the last column, and the 7 here. As we look at this right middle area, it seems empty. But towards the end, there are so many other numbers with which to eliminate choices, things really speed up. Where there are 6s, it only leaves one choice. And the current 9s leave only one choice. Similarly, there is only one place for the 8, and there is only one place for the 7. Some more tidying. Row 5 is missing just one number, a 3, and in this column, a 2. Column 2 just needs a 1 and a 2, but the 2 can't go in this row now, so this is the 1 which places the 2 here. And the middle right 3x3 three three only needs a 1 and a 3, which means a 1 here and the 3 completes it, leaving just two gaps, which must be a 1 and a 3, so the 3 here and the 1 finishes the puzzle. Congratulations! That's all there is to it. Time for you to try one of our samples, but be warned, Sudoku is very compelling and the puzzles come in different grades of difficulty. You might find you're hooked in no time, so feel free to subscribe to Popular Sudoku Magazine 
by following the link above.